welcome to a, a next topic in in uh, module three exploratory data analysis and statistics for data science that's data variability so we have seen um, measures of central tendency now we're talking about measures of data variability and let me take an example to explain this as well so just put a heading measures of data variability Ability. Okay, so um, so let's say we have um, two different trains, all right? Train, train A, train A, and train B. And I'm going to just roughly put some. So this actually. I'm measuring the delay of train arriving at a particular station, All right? So let's say train A has a delay of 10 minutes. So delay in minutes I've put in, delay in minutes of train at a station, okay? First train, train A has 10 minutes delay on a day and another day it is 18 minutes delay and then other day it is 12 minutes delay another day it is 15 minutes delay and then some other day it is let's say um, 17 minutes delay okay there are different delays of a train a so in the similar manner i'm going to also put a train b delay so train b has let's say first day is really less two minutes delay and then the other day it is 30 minutes delay, it's pretty high. And the other day it is five minutes delay, another day it's 15 minutes delay, another day it is um, 22 minutes delay, okay? So train A has a delay and train B has a delay. So let's first try our measures of central tendency and see if we can compare these two delays and say which train is better, okay? So let me compare that. So I'm gonna print out, print, um, mean of delay mean delay of train a that makes sense of train a and which is your sp dot mean and you put train a oh i did not run this run it then it should automatically pick okay i'm going to copy paste this everything remains same i'm going to say it's train b and uh, also b over here and let me also print the medians because that's the second measure we have seen so here it should be median then. So this is train A. And then print it again. B median. So we have, uh, I can adjust a bit. Let me just do it a bit. Okay, so we have uh, data here, which is, we can see that, um, so can you tell me, can you tell me which train is better, train A or train B? Well, you can't really say much because they have an exact same means, 14.4 minutes each, and the exact same medians as well. So if you're looking at the measures of central tendency only, you conclude that both trains are exactly the same. But is it exactly the same? Look at the numbers. Do you find anything different in train A and train B? Which one you actually prefer if you're traveling in this train from a certain station? Which one you prefer? Well, if you really look at train A, let's say both are supposed to arrive at 10 a.m. On, on this station. Train A always arrives minimum of 10 minutes delay, as you can see, and the maximum of eight minutes delay. So if you be there at like 10, 10, which is after 10 minutes, plus or minus, the maximum five to six minutes or eight minutes max, you will get the train. So it's pretty much predictable. So the train, the values are around the mean. So mean is actually 14.4. Uh, the values are around the mean, plus or minus three or four minutes. Whereas a train B, you have to be at dot time because sometimes it comes even two minutes or maybe on the time. And it could go up to 30 minutes delay. So which means 
you have to wait sometimes pretty long time. So it, it basically means train B is inconsistent. So that the data is far away from the means. The mean is 14.4, just like your train A. But if you see the data, which is far away from the mean, both sides. One is this extreme, two, another is that extreme. So this is not really the same data, as you can see, they are different trains. I, I would prefer train A because it's more consistent, more predictable. Train B is not predictable. In other words, we say that the data has a different variability. So variability is a measure of how the data is spread around your mean. If it is near to the mean, we say it is less variability. If the data is spread away from the mean, it's all over, then we say it's higher data variability, okay? How did you measure it? There are different measures of data variability. The simplest one is range. If you look at the range, range is simply maximum minus minimum value. So max of your train A minus minimum of your train A. So I'm gonna print this, I'll say um, range of train A reduce the size a bit okay that's good and uh, the range of train B will simply change into B great so range of my train A is 8 and the range of my train B is 28 so it's very clearly visible that train B has a wider range, means the data is all over, away from the center. And whereas the train A has only eight, which means data is around the center. It's a very good measure and it's a simple measure. So this is good measure, but we do have a bit of problem with uh, range because it's looking at two extreme values. It's not really considering all the values. Let's assume our train is actually coming um, you know, two minutes, five minutes, six minutes, four minutes, very consistent, nice train, okay? It's almost almost plus or minus three minutes around the center and they're all very consistent. Suddenly one day something happened, uh, the train got delayed by two hours, which is 120 minutes. So what's the range of it? It's 120 minus two, which is 118 minutes, which is a very high value. So you might conclude that the train is very bad, but it's just one value. So again, it's very similar to your mean uh, mean thing. If you have an extreme values, then range is not a good measure. If you have extreme values, then range is not a good measure of variability. Variability. And self-explanatory, I mean, you, you could pretty much understand that you know range is only taking a minimum and maximum value so if you have an extreme minimum or maximum maximum the range would be ultimately higher may not be a right indication of the data but how about if you can uh, find the deviation of every single value from the center something like this let's say i have three different delays in minutes one is uh, um, six minutes, other one is, um, I'll say one is eight minutes, other one is 10 minutes, other one is uh, 12 minutes. Okay, eight minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, three delays of train on three different days. So to, to find the deviation or variability, rather than taking the extreme values, I would be taking each value deviation from the center. For that, we need to find the center first. So center is nothing but mean, so if you calculate the mean, it's nothing but 8 plus 10 plus 12 by 3, which gives you 10. You can also see it visually because it's equidistance from, 10 is equidistance from both lower and higher value. Mean, is, can, be, mean can be also represented by mu, which is a Greek, Greek symbol uh, for, for mean or average. So mean is 10. Now I'm going to calculate a difference between every single value to its mean. And you land up getting minus 2, zero and plus two. Fantastic, if you take an average of all these deviations, you should be getting a data variability, which is, should be a much better measure. We can take it, but there's one problem, because if you take an average of this, it becomes zero, because the negative deviation is 
actually canceling out the positive deviation. We don't want to cancel out. We want to have all the deviations. One of the easy methods in statistics to do is, is by squaring it. If you square it, the numbers will obviously become positive because minus into minus is also plus. So this becomes 4, this becomes anyway 0, and this becomes 4 as well. Now you take an average. How do you take an average? 0 plus 4, which is 8 by 3. 8 by 3, how much it is? Uh, 2.66. The 2.66 is a average of the square of the deviation of individual data from its center. We call this measure as variance. Variance is actually 2.66 here. It's a very good measure because uh, even if you have 100 data or 1000 data, if we take every single value deviation from the center, we square it and then we take an average of it. That's much more stronger because you're not ignoring any data in between. You're taking all the data. It gives a proper variability measure. It's a proper variability measure. Okay. But we do have a small um, problem here. Not problem. Variance is a very good measure. But just that it's not very readable because it has minutes square, isn't it? What is minute square? I understand what is minute square, but it's not very readable measure. So to bring it back to the normal, you can take a square root. So what would be the square root of this 2.66? I don't know. Let me just do it in the Python itself. So uh, we don't have square root there. Maybe here we have square root and uh, 2.66. 1.63. I'm just going to delete this. Oh. Here we go. So it is 1.66. And this, we call it as standard deviation. Standard deviation. Standard deviation is simply a square root of variance. And what is variance? Variance is the average of deviation square of all the data with respect to the center. It's as simple as that. If you want to put it in a formula ways, formula kinds, you can simply say, I'm summing up. I'm summing up all of these deviations. I mentioned that xi is a you know deviation. Uh, x, x is a uh, variable. Here it is delay in minutes is x. So I'm going to say that i is equal to uh, 1 to number of re readings. Here it is actually 3, but I'm going to put it general as n. So i is equal to 1 to n, which means it basically takes 1, 2, 3 all in this case, minus the mean, which is the average of the data, all the data. We square it and we sum it because that's a summation symbol and we simply divide it by n. This is your variance. If you take a square root of it, that becomes your standard deviation. And this is the formula for your, this is a formula for your standard deviation. Standard deviation is also represented by small sigma or simply sigma. So sigma is a standard, uh, uh, it's, it's a standard notation for your standard deviation. That's the formula. So it's as simple as that. We're taking a square root of variance. Your variance is what I explained before. In some of the cases, you might also see a formula which uses n minus 1 in the place of n, which is actually a compensation for degrees of freedom or simply a sampling error. In statistics in Python, Sorry, in machine learning in Python, all of your packages will use by n. So you can stick to this. But if you have any n minus 1, any questions about it, it is a, a correction of a sampling error, probable sampling error. But we don't, we don't take that into consideration. We go with the by n formula. Okay, so those are the three measures of your, uh, okay, let, let's do it on our train example. So let's, let's find the standard deviation. So uh, I will... Simply take this and okay, put it here. Just making it look nicer because when I share it back to you, it should look nice. And uh, this is standard deviation. 
name is pretty straightforward standard deviation it's a standard it's a deviation from the center standard deviation from the center and very prompt name and i'm going to simply say uh, you can say this copy paste this delete this one okay and um, let's say standard deviation of delay of train a standard deviation of delay of train b std std and you get train a we have a standard deviation of three minutes which is plus or minus three minutes from the center usually the train will be late in the case of train b it is 10 minutes which is pretty high so we can already say that train b has a higher standard deviation means it is it is the values are away from the uh, center it's not very consistent or predictable whereas train a has three which is closer to the center three plus or minus which is more consistent the standard deviation is a much better measure in in it's actually a standard measure for your data variability all right so let's get into that so this is the range and this is standard deviation there's a formula for that okay and i'll stop here and then the next video we'll talk about histogram and jet scores which are very important concepts for us i'll see you in the next video